according to uh, Stephen King, he calls this film the single most faithful adaption of his work. It? No. Incorrect. Um, what was that one? Caroline or something like that? Caroline? What's the car one? The car one? <laughs> I don't know. But that's the movie I picked. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Um, is it the Dark Tower? No. Yeah, I have no idea. Okay, so when the producers were having trouble finding the right actor to fill the role of John Coffey, Bruce Willis suggested Michael Clark Duncan, whom he had co-starred with in Armageddon. Oh, uh, is this the Green Mile? The Green Mile. The Green Mile. I saw this. My parents took me. What year did it come out? Um, I want to say 94, 95. It is 99. Okay. So I was 12? No. Yes. 11. Roughly. I was 11. 11-ish. Yeah. So my parents went and took me to the theater to see this. And really? It traumatized me quite a bit. <laughs> uh, between what, uh, kidney stones part? and guys eating oh, rats yeah. and raping little girls and uh, uh, electrifying, electrocuting someone. It was a pretty traumatic movie for an 11 year old. Why would your parents take you to see this? I don't know. I don't know what they what were thinking. They and this. Scary straight? This was all around the time when I wasn't allowed to watch Rugrats. Ugh. For shame. My parents had... Like, hey, this is what you should be watching. <laughs> My parents had a weird scale of what was appropriate and what wasn't. And it seems like it's just almost all inappropriate things. Yeah, well, it was mostly if they wanted to watch it or not. I'm, I'm learning more yeah. and more. <laughs> like, uh, he's trying to watch Rugrats again. Uh, here, hold it. Hey, turn that off. That's, uh, that's not good for you. I don't like you emulating this kid's behavior. Um, so what do you think about this movie? Um, I haven't seen it. I only saw it the one time. And you didn't like it? Um, Do you even know what it's about? Yes. It is about a guy who is falsely accused of raping and murdering a little girl. Two. Two little girls. Who he ended up actually protecting them or trying to protect them. He was like special Mm -hmm. needs, right? I know he had special he, powers, but he was like special. Yeah, new. he was a little slow. Yeah. Um, and so he gets arrested for it and, but he has abilities to heal people. Um, yes. And they never really make that make sense, right? They never talk about it. They don't talk about how or why he has powers, if that's what you mean. Yeah. He just does. He just does. Um, Greg. And no one else does. It's like, it's not like a X Men world or something. It's like not that. a world of magic. Yeah, uh, it's just him. Just him, and he. So he's in. Stupid. He's in prison. Tom Hanks is the prison guard, the head guard, prison chief. So he's so he's on death row, and Tom Hanks is the leader, not the leader, the the captain, the captain. of death row, essentially. And uh, there's like five other guys there. One of them was. Uh, Sam Rockwell, who was... Yes. Was he the one who actually killed the girls? Um, I don't remember. I don't think so. No. But Maybe. he, he no, was I, a terrible person. So. No. Yeah, he was just horrible. He ended up killing the rat. Yes. Um, uh, he, at one point, throws his own poop. Yes. It's and it, just, uh, I gross. feel like it's it's kind of comical, right? Like... The interactions between oh, the, the guards. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's oh, he's definitely some comic relief. Yeah. Um, it's also got uh, Doug Hutchinson, oh, David that guy's Morris. A creep. The dude's just super creep. Uh, what's the other dude? Freaking Dale from The Walking Dead. Oh, is he in is it? In this? Yes, him and Frank Darabont, who was the director, go way back. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, Tom Hanks. It's got uh, James Cromwell as the warden, Bonnie Hunt. 
it's got it's 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 got a lot of names. It's it's a good movie. And the thing is, it's one of those movies where you watch it and you finish it and you don't realize that it, it's like a three hour movie. Yeah, it's, it's like, real long. Long, but it doesn't feel long. Mm. Like it's it's constantly something going on. It's a it's a fantastic movie. Yeah. Um. So yeah, basically he's put on death row. Uh, part of the reason is this is the South and it's like the '60s, so everybody's racist, and so he's just automatically accused um, of killing these girls. When in reality, I think he was trying to bring them back to life. But yeah. they were like far Slaughtered, gone and he yeah. couldn't. So yeah, I mean that's the gist of it. He is seemed to have healing powers. He heals Tom Hanks of his kidney stones. Yep. Which is he, super weird. So, oh, it's very weird. That is very uncomfortable. Because he, he just grabs he his crotch. He touches what is what he's healing. Yeah. And then, like, uh, he does it, and then flies come out of his mouth. It's really wacky. Yeah, that was weird. Um, I'm sure the book probably explains all that a little more. I doubt the movie. it. You I don't, don't? I don't think oh. so. You don't think so? No. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. It's it's it is one of the books that I would like to read at some point. Have you read much uh, Stephen King? I've read I've read a good amount. I've read all the Dark Tower series. I've read uh some others that I can't think of at the moment. <laughs> good. I did um I went through the Mr. Mercedes. Oh books. yeah, yeah, those are the ones. Did you ever finish them? I need to read the third one. I haven't read that one uh, yet. So I've read the first two. Don't do it. No? No, just skip it. Oh, to what? <laughs> skip it and move on to the rest of your life. Thing? Yeah. Have you watched the show? Huh? Watch the show? What show? It's Mercedes. There's a show? It just came out this year. I did not see it, no. Hmm. Well? The book, they... book number three, uh, does not end well. It's not very good. I hated book number three. Like the whole thing or just the ending? Like the whole thing. Really? Yeah. Yeah, huh. it was not good. Uh, yeah. So he also kills the warden's wife. Uh, she has cancer, which the guards actually break him out of prison and take him to the warden's house in the middle of the night to heal his wife. Uh, he heals a mouse that is killed. And I feel like there's one other one that he does. I don't quite remember. Well, have you seen it? Did you go see I it? I have seen it. What did you think of it? Um, it was not bad. Yeah. I didn't see it, but we, I heard a lot of things about it. We watched the original and then the new one back to back. Oh. So it was like That's five a lot of hours. It. Yeah. I didn't realize that the first one was so long. It's like three hours. Oh. I tried, um, I tried reading the book Luke? and, uh, couldn't get into it. Yeah, Stephen King is a good author, obviously, because he's Stephen King. But he's sometimes he's hard to follow because he's so weird. Yeah, he's so weird. And and something that I've learned in all the books that I've read, he has no problem whatsoever killing kids, and not just like having kids die. I mean, like. Really killing kids. Yeah. Um, there's one that stands out. It's called Resurrection. Have you heard of this one? No. Uh, I think that's what it's called. No, it's called Revival. Sorry. That one is graphic. It's a good book. Uh, pretty graphic, especially with children. Yeah. But then there's it. There is. There's, I don't know, there's a few of It's hard to, to see something by Stephen King where a kid is not dying. You don't like when kids die? That's not your favorite thing? That's like my third favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, yeah, so I have seen it. Uh, there will be another one. Have you seen the original? It? No, I haven't seen any of them. I didn't, so I, I've, I think I've talked about it on here before. We did an episode on Child's Play. But, uh, yes. when I was a kid, my grandpa had us watch Chucky, Child's Play, and it traumatized me. And I was so afraid. Classic. And, uh, I just assumed I hated horror movies, so I never really watched them. Never really got into them. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. And now, like, they don't bother me. I just don't, I don't enjoy them. Like, they're not interesting to me. I don't get, I don't get, uh, like, satisfaction out of being afraid. But uh, also, I'm not afraid. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, everybody look at this. <laughs> hey, I just, Steven, I'm not afraid of you anymore. <laughs> I just mean like they're not scary to me because I know they're movies, and I so yeah. I don't I don't get lost in them. I don't like get uh, sucked into the world or whatever. And so right. it's just kind of a boring story with people making bad choices, doing dumb things that are getting murdered for it. And so it's like never really that interesting to me. Um, yeah, for me, the thing that gets me, I don't watch a lot of horror movies and it's, so it's not really like a scary story or like I'm scared that someone is going to die, this and that. It's, it's more of those like, uh, super quiet and then super loud moments when it jump out at you and it's the startling moments. Yeah, the jump scares. Which is kind of, I feel like what, Horror movies have turned into well, it's because it's easy. It's not actually scary. It's startling, and yeah. startling is not enjoyable. Like no one, it is, and you're right. It's so easy to do because you can have it. It doesn't even have to be someone jumping out or scaring. It could be the uh, the the music score in the background, you know, getting soft and then just a loud note. Yeah. Well, this is how easy jump scares are. Is I do it to my kids all the time. Love it. I'll sit there, I'll, I'll, I'll hold them by the shoulders and just stare at them in the eyes and then just look at me and then I'll scream and shake them and uh, nice. then they get mad and try to punch me. Yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. Yeah, and it's not hard to do is the thing. Like a jump scare, it, it's a lazy tactic that all horror movies do because it gets immediate results. So people are on because- edge... And they feel like, oh, this is a scary movie because I don't know what's going to happen. But in reality, it's not. It's not scary. It's not. It's not interesting. So, so what? What would you say is like an actual scary movie? Like, if there was going to be a movie that scared you, what would it be? Um, like if I was going to make a scary movie, or no, like uh, of a, movies that are out there. What's yeah. the closest movie that's ever? that's come to scaring you uh probably not one that's considered a horror um something (laughs) something based on real life that's like conceivable is more scary to me um mystic maybe something like the zodiac um like anything that involves like rape or murder of innocent people or like torture of innocent people uh, that, yeah. that just makes me uncomfortable. Like, oh, for sure. it doesn't, that doesn't really scare me. It just, I'm like, oh, I don't, one, I don't, Unsettling. yeah, I don't really want this in my brain. I don't really want to like take a part of this. Um, the movies I thought would be really scary, uh, that d- did not work at all was the movies like The Purge. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, I have no desire. Um, I thought it would be good. I thought the idea was interesting. Like, oh, you get 24 hours to go and do whatever you want. Like the idea, yeah. Um, but it's just, it just didn't work. Um, the the strangers. That's another one I thought would be good, but it wasn't really that scary. Like the idea of just people coming into your home and kidnapping you. Yeah. Um, but I here's pr- one. Go ahead. I was going to say the, the ones where people are isolated, um, those are probably the most not... Castaway. Yeah, Castaway. Um, I was thinking... Biodo. There's one with um, Ryan Reynolds where he is in a coffin. 
Oh yeah, I've heard of that. I haven't seen it. No, I yeah, I saw it a long time ago, and it was um, someone ruined it for me, and so I I I was like, oh, I'm not gonna watch this. It was okay. It wasn't like the best movie. I think it was called Buried, right? Yeah, yeah. And that one, um, it's probably more stressful. I that's the thing. I just don't. I just don't really get afraid of movies. Yeah. I, I, have you seen the movie Funny Games? Yeah, I think so. I think that's what I was thinking of when I said sh- strangers. <laughs> strangers. I just said so it. So funny right, games. A minute ago, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm trying to think of what strangers is. Which one is that? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think I was thinking of funny games when I said strangers. Uh, I don't think that's an actual movie. The strangers, I believe, is a movie. I don't know. I don't know. Sure. I, Funny games is one where it's 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 very unsettling because it's very conceivable not only that it could happen but there are people like that out there that who knows they could come to your house like yeah. all of that can happen easily Did you see the movie like it probably does happen that had um what's the guy from Anchorman uh the sports guy what's his name David Keckner Yeah David Keckner he was in a like Camp a, guy. a uh, psychological thriller with um, really? yeah, it was interesting. It was uh, hmm. have I told you my thoughts on David Keckner? No, not a fan. I don't like him. Why is that? Uh, he drives me nuts. I don't think he's funny, and he definitely, for the most part, well, for everything that I've seen, I don't like him. As a leading role, I don't think he has it. No, he, yeah, he's, he's got probably... he's good roles. Like he can be funny as like a background supporting guy, like an anchor man. Uh-huh. But sometimes he just he can't he can't take hold of the movie and be the lead. He just doesn't have it. Yeah, there's just some people who they don't they don't got it. <laughs> like us. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. He's definitely like, got uh, it more than we do. Oh, for sure. Like, here's another one that I, I like him in a lot of movies, but uh, when he's the lead actor, I don't like him. Sean William Scott. Mm. I just don't think he's funny. I like him like with in the, the role models. The Rock in uh, what was that movie? See, called? well, yeah, the I get that one mixed up between the Rundown, Rundown, and Walking Tall. Walk is definitely not Walking Tall. I think it was a so rundown. So it's a rundown. Yeah, see, that's another one. He was good in that. He's got good roles, but when he is the main character, I don't think he's funny at all yeah. or cool or whatever he's trying to be. Well, the David Keckner movie I was thinking of was Cheap Thrills. Hmm. I have not heard nor seen that. He's like this super rich guy and invites these two friends over to his house to do bets. And he'll be like, I'll give you $100 if you punch your buddy in the face. And then it just like Oh, keeps... yeah. I remember you telling me about that a while back ago. You know? It's messed up. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger. Huh. So those are the type of movies that I think affect me more than horror movies do. Like slasher films, movies like Saw that's just like torture porn. Those, all that type of stuff, I'm like... I really am not interested in even beyond like it's just not they're just not good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they don't have any substance to them. Yeah. Which that's what I think can make horror or scary movies good is when you have some kind of investment in it, you know, where you feel like it's your what's uh yeah, like invested. And if there's the story's not there, the scares aren't going to be there. Yeah. Like um I think one of probably one of my favorites, at least one of my favorite moments in a scary movie would be in Saw. You've seen Saw, right? Yes. It, at the end, when it turns out that the guy, the dead guy, was actually Jigsaw the entire time. No, oh, yeah, that was and that was cool. I enjoy. I enjoyed the first Saw movie like a bunch. Yeah, I thought it was real. Uh, and then I think we've talked about it before. It just steadily declined mm-hmm. until well, it, it was just. Let's think of the most creative way we can have someone's face be ripped off. Yeah. 
Well, I think it's, Saw there's a story. Saw one versus Saw seven, right? You have, yeah. I mean, probably Saw four. Saw four is probably the peak, I would guess, budget wise. I, I saw the first four, and then I think I started the fifth one, and at that point, I was like, I'm, I'm over this. Well, what I was gonna say is, the I, let's say Saw four is the peak of the franchise, like the most money put into it and all that. Right. Saw yeah. one had the best script with the worst budget. With the with the lowest budget, and they slowly, yeah, they. It, it, Flipped. They moved. They met at four, and then went the other way. Yeah, and so the the scripts got worse and worse because they because they're doing them every single year, over and over and over. And it was just like, well, you can't yep. you can't really keep up that pace. Like I thought, Saw two, Saw two had a good reveal. Um, you have to remind me which is which. I don't. So even remember Saw two point. is the one where they're all in the house together. There's like eight people okay. in the house, and they're trying to get a, a number off the back of everyone's head. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the end, the reveal is that the, his son, Donnie Wahlberg's uh-huh. son, um, was kidnapped, but was safe in a safe sitting next to Donnie Wahlberg the whole time. And Jigsaw said, mm-hmm. all you have to do is nothing. Just stay here and you'll get your son back. And cause it was all in a timer and, uh, it ended where Donnie Wahlberg try to leave and ends up dying and then the sun if you find out the sun was in the safe the entire time yeah yeah that one was good um but then it just it just i don't know it just got too much it wasn't interesting anymore and they kept bringing people back and then it turned out the guy from the first one who cut his foot off was actually still alive and was yeah. a surgeon and it was just like okay this is well yeah you could tell they got to the point where they thought of all the different traps and torture devices, you know, thought mm-hmm. of what it was going to be, and then wrote the story around those to yeah. fit into that. And it just wasn't, it wasn't good. Yeah. It wasn't even interesting. Well, because it, in the beginning, it was always like, you had to kill yourself type of thing. Like you, you had a way out that was clear. You just had to be willing to go through it. And then I remember there was one, where there was like six people on a carousel and it was mm-hmm. like, you're going to have to shoot four people, choose four people yeah. to die. And I was like, whoa, this is, this seems completely backwards from the intent. From the first. Yeah. Yeah. It, Although yeah, that like one, all the other ones, there's a way to like, it's not going to be, you just die. Like there is a way yeah. it might not be easy or something you are willing to do, but you can survive this. They actually may have made a point of that though. That might've been one of the ones where it wasn't necessarily jigsaw doing it. Cause they're like, Oh, this is not his MO. I don't remember. Oh yeah. I think you're right about that. <clears throat> it was the uh, other person. Yeah. I don't know. Those movies, w- the, it had potential, but it just lost it and it got so too, too wrapped up into um, being torturous and not interesting. Exactly. exactly. Which I feel like Do everything think- does. The new one will be more of the same or back to its roots? Um, I think it'll be better. I think it's going to, because it, it's it'll had some time. I think it'll be close to, to probably around number four, like what we said. Yeah. Where the, the budget's going to be high, I assume. Um, and then there's, hopefully there's some kind of decent story because they've had five years to work on it. Yeah. I imagine it's going to be a um like a prequel type thing, like a setting everything up. Yeah, that could be. But I don't know. We'll see. I'll probably watch it just because I'm I'm seven movies deep. I feel invested. But I like. Yeah, it's just, I haven't even seen the last three. Really, not that interested. Yeah. But, um, um. So I was gonna go ahead. The Green Mile. Green Mile comes on TV. What are you gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, I'll probably change the channel. I uh, have no real interest in. You should, give it a try. you should give it a try. No, because there there's a a nice twist at the end. I don't know if you remember the ending ending at all. Um, um, I know he gets killed, right? So yeah, pretty much he he's executed because he's on death row, and that's just kind of what happens. Um, but there's. And that's that's the end, essentially of the story. But there's more afterwards, 
It's like, I almost don't want to say anything because you should just watch it because it's pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to watch it. You can just tell me. So, Spoiler alert, by the way, if you haven't seen The Green Mile. Right. So, okay. Basically, the the movie is Tom Hanks, and he's the narrator as well. And then at the end, we see Tom Hanks as an old man, and he lives in like a retirement home. Uh and with that, with the mouse he has as a pet, mm-hmm. and essentially what it what it comes down to is you find out that he's like two hundred something years old, and whatever John Coffey did gave him like super long life. Mm. So him and the mouse are still alive, like a hundred years after all that stuff happened. Yeah, it's something along those lines. It's it, it's been a little while since I've seen him, but. Mm. I thought it was pretty cool. It's uh, it's definitely like a, it's got a nice Stephen King uh, supernatural touch to it. Yeah. All right. Well, I have a new segment for you, sir. Okay. What you got? Um, we've been doing current events on the last couple episodes, but I yes. thought what would be better since we're not really a political show, we don't really have any knowledge on politics and what's going on in the world. That we should use that ignorance and focus on movies still. Just continue to focus on movies. Okay. But this week, it is currently uh, January... What day does this come out? This comes out on January 7th. So, this weekend, Insidious, The Last Key came out. I would like to know your review on this movie. Uh, it was garbage. Why didn't you like Absolutely. it? Uh, a bunch of the same old thing. How did you, how did you feel about the cin- cinematography? It was shaky at best. Yeah? Well, how about the story? Do you feel like it was r- well written? Was it? Did they just kind of lose track of the, the narrative? I'm going to say it... Uh, the fact that it became a comedy was a twist that I didn't mm. care for. Yeah, that is that is a weird sidestep. Like it went full on comedy. Like what level of comedy? Like the Naked seven. Gun movies? <laughs> seven. Like the Naked Gun movies, or was it smaller? No, like than the that? movie Seven. Oh, Seven. The. Yeah. the <laughs> you know the comedy Seven. Brad yeah. Pitt, Morgan Freeman. Yep, yep. We've talked about it. Yeah. Um, can you give us a plot summary of it? What was uh, it? What is it? Insidious, the last key. Is this like the third one? Um, was there another one? I thought this was the second one. I don't even know. It's probably um, the third one. It being called the last key. Okay, so basically, this is about uh, a child. Yep. I don't know. Ba- no, so what it comes down to is this guy is being chased by a madman, serial killer, uh-huh. and, and all he has to do is get into his apartment because he has a panic room. Oh, okay. But you know, like, when you're panicking and panicking and you really got to unlock your door and you got, like, ten keys on your keychain yeah. and you're dropping your keys and you're fumbling and you can't find the right one. Is this guy a well, janitor? Out, uh, yes. Oh, okay. He's got the big ring of keys. Yeah. Uh, basically, spoiler alert, serial killer gets to him, uh, cause he wasn't able to get to the last key, which was the apartment key. Oh. Man, that, I'm, that's riveting. But you didn't like it. Yeah. Four out of ten. Would not recommend. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't seen it yet, so I'll have to, I'll have to pass on that one, I guess, based on your yeah, review. No point. No point now. <laughs> well. Um, yeah, so if you like, if you like this show, if you want to help us out, you can go over to Patreon, uh, for a dollar, you can get access to all our episodes a week, two weeks in advance now. Um, and you can also help decide who needs to be punished. Um, you vote for Taylor or I and whoever is in, I, how do, I always want to say in the lead doesn't have to be punished. Whoever is the lead loser. <laughs> Whoever is in the lead of the back, in the reverse lead. 
Whoever is in second place lead. Yeah, the second second place leader has to pay the punishment. Correct. Um, for November, we had our legs waxed. One of us did. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> how did it feel? <laughs> Being so far in the future is making this complicated. It hurts. <laughs> and then if you want to get a hold of us, you can reach us at, on Twitter at Icing That Pod. Um, yeah, basically, that's it. Goodbye now from me. 